Okay, I completely forgot to record this. I tried recording yesterday. I had some luck, but got too tired to deal with it. Never got around to recording it today. So, let's see. I am going to be doing What If Austin Had Pure Mana Part 2, because we did hit the light goal. And if we want a Part 3, another 50 likes. So yeah, if we get another 50 likes on this part, then I'll do a Part 3. But uh, we left off with Asta getting his grimoire, somewhat declaring his rivalry with Yuno, and beginning the six months of training. Now, what do the six months of training consist with? Or, you know, what are they made up of? Well, throughout Asta's, well, training, throughout his life with his father, he has been told a lot by his adoptive father what Asta's weaknesses are. And those are, well, one... Mana control, two, mana sensing, and three, range. Those are his three main, well, weaknesses. Although, yes, he normally uses uh, reinforcement magic, he can't control his mana that well, so he can put too much mana into something, but not get as much, well, not get as much, it wouldn't be as efficient. You get the idea, it wouldn't be as, as, as efficient as it should be if he had better control. And then, uh, his sensing mana is also bad because he wouldn't be able to sense whether or not there's an enemy nearby, or if he got blinded by something, he wouldn't be able to sense an attack coming because that attack would be made of mana. And if the person themselves are coming for Asta, they themselves have mana. So, yeah, and then he's just ranged. He does not have any ranged attacks. But Yuno does, and Yuno is going to use that to his advantage. Even if Asta upped up his defense super high, Yuno could use his wind magic to shoot Asta into the air. And then Asta would just have to, well, he would have to land by using his, well, by using his uh, reinforcement magic to up his defense to such a level that he reduces the damage just to survive. But would he be uninjured? Probably, probably not. We don't know even though his body is naturally really durable. By really durable, uh, Noel and I believe another person, Mimosa, I think is his name, Noel's cousin, they actually slapped Asta later in the series and commented that his skin was as hard as bricks because they hurt themselves while slapping him. So that means Asta's very durable. And we see this. We actually see this quite often, you know. He just takes a lot of damage. We've seen him take, you know, attacks straight up fire that should basically incinerate him and any everyone getting hit by them. But he was able to stand in them. If he got any closer to the source, he, I think it was him, he did mention, or someone mentioned, that he would be turned to ash. So even not being directly, you know, having the full power of the fire, the part at which she was already in would have been enough to kill anyone else. But he survived. So, what is Asta going to do? He's going to work on his mana sensing and control at the same time. He's going to do this by working with his mother, his adoptive mother. She has far more control than the average person and far more well, the ability to sense mana than everyone else in the village. Her ability to sense mana is probably around a 4, and her, her ability to control mana is, we're going to say, a 5. So she has complete control over her mana. And she would need a lot of control to be able to use her magic to actually do her job. Because if you remember, she makes clothes. And, yeah. You, you need to be precise with that. So... Asta begins six months of training. Now, what do we see happen? Well, Asta does increase his physical strength because he does continue to train his body and he does build up slightly more muscle than what he had before. He's still physically stronger than what he is by the end of the six months in canon. And by the end of the six months here, he'd still be physically stronger than what he is. But we... Let's see. But with it come, when it comes to control, I think we gave him a 2. So he's going to be a 3 with his mana control, which is like right in the middle, which I believe is average. And then 
his mana sensing I think was a one, so it's gonna up it to a two. Now, because of his, you know, mother having a very good ability to sense mana and Asta learning to control his mana, he would actually learn to control his mana or, you know, have higher levels of controlling it by pushing it out of his body and controlling it. How, how would he do that? Well, he somewhat makes a sphere and just condenses his mana into a sphere. And that eventually will turn into his ranged attacks. But the more he condenses... Well, the larger amount of mana he has, the more he condenses it, the stronger it actually is. And his mother would realize this and might even mention it to him. Or at least give him tips about maybe if he compresses it more, it might do something. But, you know, since Asa's still has not super decent, you know, uh, control, it does take a bit of time. And eventually it does take, it also takes time, you know, build up the attack, but he is able to eventually produce a ranged attack. Which, we won't give a name yet. If you guys want to think of a name for it, it's basically, think of a key blast. It's basically that. He focuses one, with one hand he pushes the mana out, and with the other hand he keeps it in a sphere and compresses it. So, you know, both hands, both hands together he makes a sphere of mana and slowly compresses it and then shoots it out with one hand. You know, he aims and shoots. So if you guys want to name, well, give it an attack, nothing special. But yeah, now that's really what consists of his, well, his training. He does pick up a couple other things, but those are just skills that he learned through his ability to somewhat sense mana better and its ability to control his mana. Now, him and Yuno leave, they get to the capital. We're going to say they actually get there early because they we're going to say they leave later than in canon, but they push each other because they're, well, they're supposed to be rivals. So they challenge each other. To see he was going to get there first. You know would use his wind chariot. A spell that he. Well got for mobility. By making a tornado of wind. Or you know just a tornado. And basically putting himself inside of it. He uses that tornado to carry him from place to place. While Asta just uses his normal speed. And eventually will have to use his. Well reinforcement magic to keep up with Yuno. And eventually they get to the capital. They're actually going to, well, arrive just a tad bit earlier than in canon. Earlier enough to where Asa doesn't actually, well, he doesn't actually get that, I think, smoked or grilled lizard or salamander, or whatever it was called. He doesn't get that. They arrive, Colosseum area. They are, I guess, checked in to see, you know, to be participants in the Magic Knights exam. The guy who checks in, you know, is surprised because, you know, as a four-leaf clover, we skip Asta. He doesn't even think Asta's Grimoire is an actual one. It looks tattered and old. Grimoires don't look like that. It has a five-leaf clover. He's only ever heard of a four-leaf clover, and he believes that one is the rarest one. So he thinks Asta's is fake, but Asta would show him it's real, and the guy's dumbfounded. He's like, a five-leaf? Is that even... Is that more rare than a four-leaf? He, he's just confused. He lets them pass, and he just stops paying attention and just continues to think about a four and a five-leaf. That's weird. Now, Asta would run into Yami, like he does in canon, not from running away from the birds, but just because he'd be talking to Yuno, more like yelling because Yuno is ignoring him, and he would accidentally walk into Yami, and Yami would say, do you want to die? Grabbing Asta by the head, and basically squishing Asta's head. Asta, with both arms being physically stronger, shows off his strength to Yami. Yami is surprised by strength, but Asta doesn't use his reinforcement magic because he's immediately thinking just crush his arm. Asta, I don't think, is physically strong enough to do that yet, or at least, you know, is just worried about getting his hand. He's probably like grabbing Yami's arm and then getting it off of his head. So he probably wasn't worried about attacking. Yami would throw Asta down because the other captains would show up and he's like, oh, I gotta go join them. So he'd throw Asta behind him. And we see Yami eventually reach the other captains. One of the captains, William, captain of the Golden Dawns, would come up and would start speaking about how the exam will go. And would tell them that the first exam is, well, is a test to see how they do with a broom, a magic broom. They are all given one by William using his World Tree magic. And everyone has around the same, you know, they do the same except for Asta. Asta, having 
I said a three in mono control and being a very, very fast learner because if you think about it, Asta picked up key in a matter of minutes. Literal a matter of minutes. So I don't think it's I don't think it's far fetched that he would learn how to well fly in mere seconds. He'd be able to do it like other people. But he's not like Yuno going super slow and just standing on it. No, he's actually just going really, really fast around the arena. And he does fly off. But by using his mana and one of his, you know, newfound abilities, he is able to move stuff by basically cloaking it in his mana and is able to move it. So he can somewhat calls it towards him and he grabs on, somewhat pulling himself back up and is now standing on it similar to Thunder's Yuno and just goes to the ground. The captain saw what he did and are all laughing somewhat to themselves because they're like, oh, he's a pretty fast learner. And then he almost threw himself off, but was able to catch himself by using his magic, I guess. You know, he, he called the broom using his magic. Next would be a ranged test to see how the candidates do with a, well, with hitting a, I guess, brick wall and then a moving target. Asta, although it does take time, charges up his attack and hits the wall and then just barely barely actually hitting it he hits the moving target just barely on the outside like where the outside is he just barely hits the edge of it but it counts because of how big the well blast actually is next we would see asta uh, use creation magic, which again, he's a very fast learner, and by watching what other people are doing and mimicking what they were do, well, what they're doing, he's actually able to use creation magic. Seeing that some of them have fire, you know, has wind, and he sees you know using wind creation magic, and since he has mana, his creations are gonna be made of mana. And what do we have? We have Asta making. We're gonna say he mimics Seke. And instead of making a statue of Seke, he makes a statue of himself, but it's made of mana. You know, just condensed mana. Next, they would have to use a seed or use their mana to make a seed grow faster. Which, Asta would actually do pretty easily, but it would add too much mana into it. And the seed would somewhat overgrow going, well, going to a full, you know, thing. A full plant. Now... I think those are all the tests, but we skip to the final one, the final tests, the one that really shows what they're capable of, the fighting test. Seke was keeping an eye on everyone and saw Asta. He saw how fast Asta is able to pick up on things, and he saw that Asta, although his attacks aren't super powerful and they take some time to, you know, build up, he doesn't know what he's fully capable of. Just like him, he could be hiding what he's truly capable of and making others, you know, believe he's weaker. So he decides he's going to go for someone else. Someone that he definitely knows is weaker than himself and weaker than Asta. Now, Seke would use his ability to sense mana on Asta and would sense that Asta does have a low amount of mana. But why is this? Well, through Asta learning how to sense and control his mana better, he actually learned to suppress himself. Basically, instead of being instead of being on par with Yuno, it feels like he's only a commoner or a peasant. So he doesn't well. It doesn't look like he has that much mana. So well, we would see Asta fight someone, or at least eventually find someone to fight, and that person we're gonna say is an Ice Mage. And the Ice Mage, you know, would use their ability to sense mana. Asta, oh, this this guy's a commoner he's a peasant he barely has any mana and then he gets wiped Asta wipes the floor with him mainly because all of the well all of the abilities that they needed to show off were not good to show how strong Asta actually is so they would actually see well how strong Asta actually is because he would use his reinforcement magic and would easily be able to destroy the ice mage Mainly because the Ice Mage tries to do ranged attacks and easily frees Asta. But Asta is able to move far faster than the Ice Mage's attacks. Even without his reinforcement magic. 
he's using his reinforcement magic to increase his speed and the faster he is the well the stronger his attacks are going to be even if he increases his strength as well with his speed it's overkill so asta beats this guy down kicking him into the air jumping into the air hitting him down falling to the ground probably even charging up his attack you know his ranged one and shooting it at the guy the guy would just make a shield of ice and just barely you know not get hit and then asta falls on where he is and would just beat on him he would eventually the guy would call out that he gives up and asta wins you know goes you know that everyone fights and asta's surprised he's thinking oh i picked a weak opponent thinking he didn't get to show off his full skills now we skip you know, you know, who who raises their hand for you know everyone. Everyone does. You know picks golden dawns. Now when Ost goes, who's gonna raise their hands? We actually see two squads raise their hands. The black bulls and the praying mantises. The praying mantis guy actually likes what Ost is able to do. Osto relies on more physical strength and reinforcement magic than others, but he definitely thinks Asta could have a lot of potential and may be strong in the future, thinking, oh, it's just a commoner. You know, he gets into a Magic Knight squad, he's gonna, you know, he's gonna go up, he's gonna rise higher and higher. And he's thinking maybe he could test himself against this kid and see how easily this kid will be cut to shreds. And this guy, the way he talks, the way he looks, kind of, it kind of throws Asta off. And after looking at Yami, he remembers who Yami is somewhat because he ran into him. And he decides that he's going to go with the Black Bulls. Now, everyone is just dumbfounded. Even the other captains. Yami actually starts laughing. Saying that it's more appealing to go to the Black Bulls than the Praying Mantises. Now, that's where I'm going to leave it off here. Asta doesn't need to go to the restroom. He eventually makes it to the Black Bulls hideout. And I will go over the Baptism by Fire in the first mission. And the next part, if you guys want more of this, 50 likes on the video, I'll do a third part. Bye, guys, and have a wonderful time. Bye.